Good evening and welcome to Lunar Seas News from Space Update. This update's a little closer to the Earth. It's an article from MSNBC.com. NASA tests robot landers to lead way to future. Cutting-edge technology research to take humans to destinations in the solar system. This article was by Denise Chow from Space.com. Now, before we get started, this cutting-edge technology research to take human to destinations in the solar system. Now, I do believe this cutting-edge technology was supposed to have been perfected back in the late 60s and early 70s when they supposedly landed and took off from the moon with such a, a contraption six times perfectly. Okay, I digress. Back to the article here. Engineers at two separate NASA centers are hard at work developing futuristic robot landers with cutting-edge technology that could one day be used to take humans back to the moon or other destinations in the solar system. At the agency's Johnson Space Center in Houston, members of the Morpheus Project are gearing up for two consecutive tethered tests of their robotic lander later this month. At the Marshall Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama, Work is continuing on robotic robotic lander development project after a successful free flight test in June. The two landers are being developed as part of NASA projects to design a new generation of small, versatile robotic landers that are capable of performing science and research at a variety of destinations in the solar system. The most Morpheus project resumed testing last month after upgrades were made to the lander's launch site to prevent grass fires, like the one that broke out during the tether test on June 1st, said Morpheus engineer Tim Crane. Basically, it's a set of independent power radios and valves we can use to close off feed to the main engine to end flight if all else fails, Crane told Space.com. We have three primary systems on the vehicle that do the same. This is all geared around ensuring safety for the JSC workforce and surrounding population while we are doing low energy free flights in Houston. Later this month, the Morpheus lander is expected to perform two consecutive tether tests in which it will lift off from a concrete pad, hover to an altitude of about 98 feet, and then land on another pad about 130 feet away. The entire flight is expected to last about 60 to 70 seconds, and Morpheus will be tethered to a crane above for protection, Crane said. Now, while the landers are experimenting with advanced technology, <laughs> the engineers also are also being resourceful in their design of the futuristic craft. Crane has a few to Morpheus as Home Depot Engineering. But this has helped the project maintain a flexible test schedule. Now, I don't know about y'all, but if you've been to Home Depot, you know they suck. Anyhow, uh, I digress again. One of the advantages of Morpheus project management and team approach is that we are very nimble and can change our test flight test program as test results roll in, Crane said. So these dates are what we are planning for now, but could change quickly. At the Marshall Space Flight Center, the robotic lander development project engineers are preparing for more free flight tests after the lander prototype successfully completed a second untethered test flight. During the test, the lander ascended to a six-foot hover and descended in a controlled landing. With each test flight, the lander is stabilizing, flying longer, and demonstrating its control algorithms can maintain a stable attitude and execute and execute a soft landing using the system's pulsing thrusters, NASA officials said in a statement. The prototype is also testing sensors, flight software, and landing techniques that will allow the spacecraft to perform autonomous landings on airless planetary bodies in the solar system when either other options, such as parachutes, are not available. <laughs> okay, then. All right, enjoy the videos, enjoy the update, and have a great day, and we'll see you in space.